the IPO, we're going to talk about the initial public offering. That's what IPO means, is initial public offering. Essentially what that is, is a company for the first time is offering stock for sale to the public. Uh, entrepreneurs tend to wonder about IPOs and know very little about them except that uh, it is an exit event, uh, meaning it provides liquidity to investors. It allows investors to sell their shares in a privately held company. Uh, but it's important to know what an IPO is and how it works, um, just so you have an understanding of what those companies are going through. Like I said before, it's the offering of sh say, uh, shares pardon me, for sale uh, to the public on the stock market. That's essentially what you're doing. It's important to understand that this is a funding event. It's a money raising event for the company. Uh, that's essentially what the company is doing is they're creating some shares and they're selling them to the public and that means they're raising money. Uh, so if they sold you know, $200 million worth of shares, it means that now that money goes to the company, goes to the corporation. Then of course those shares can trade in between investors, but it's really a fundraising event for companies. So it's a step along the way uh, of a company's growth. It doesn't mean they stop growing, it means now they have a bunch of money to play with in order to grow further. Uh, it also, importantly, it creates liquidity, uh, which we've talked about in other videos, but liquidity essentially means that investors can get out of an investment or sell their shares. And uh, it's important to note the role of investment banks and lawyers in this process. They're both important players in an initial public offering. Uh, the bankers are referred to as the underwriter, uh, and they will handle the process of selling the shares for the company. They will also take a commission to do so. Lawyers uh, deal with what are substantive legal and financial hurdles. Uh, there are lo there's lots of document preparation, audits, um, or, or you know, organizing financial statements, and then tons of legal requirements around an initial public offering. Um, I put up Sarbanes-Oxley. Uh, that that uh, piece of legislation created very high requirements and cost for companies. So it used to be that companies that were a lot smaller could have an IPO. Um, now they can't afford it. So you, you typically have to be on the order of a hundred million dollar company, you know, uh, generally in that range via either valuation or revenue uh, to substantiate a public offering. Very expensive to hire both uh, investment bankers and lawyers. Investment bankers will often take commissions up to 8%, uh, sometimes, most of the time lower, but of the money that you raise. So you can imagine if you raised $100 million what that means. All right, so let's talk about what actually happens in an IPO. Um, first of all, there's two major things that are happening. You're, you have to price the stock, how much is it worth, what's the valuation of the company, and then you have to sell it. So pricing really, you're raising money for the company, so you're gauging interest in, in the stock. That's what the investment bankers are, are charged with is how much is this worth? How do we rationalize the valuation of this company? And how do we explain to investors that there's upside so they should buy shares? And then we need to set the price of the shares. Are they $5 a share, $10 a share, $20 a share? We don't want to make the mistake of setting the price so high that when the trading opens on the public market that the stock sinks and there isn't much interest in it. But you don't want to set the price too low because then you won't raise as much money as you could for the company. So it's sort of a, an art and a little bit of a dance in, in how you price shares. And then you have to, the bankers have to sell those shares. They'll do what's called a road show to institutional investors. So that means they go around and visit what are essentially mutual funds and other large investment entities. And they'll say, hey, we've got this company that's going to go public, Hasselhoff Incorporated. They make TV shows. You should be really interested in this company. There's a lot of upside growth here. Are you interested in, in buying some of these shares? And the, the institutional investor will say, well, how much do those shares cost? Oh, in this case, they're $20 a share. Uh, and they'll explain why they're $20 a share, and they'll tell the institutional investors what a great company it is, show them their financial statements, talk about their past performance, talk about their future goals. Uh, that's called, that's why they call investment banking sell side, uh, is they're selling shares and they're pricing shares to institutional investors. So if you're lucky enough to get a bunch of institutional investors interested in your shares, uh, th then you'll have enough subscription. It's being called subscribing. If you have more than enough interested in your shares, then it's called being oversubscribed, and that may drive the price up of the offering. So right before a public offering, the price of the stock may still be moving around. So let's let's look at what happens during a public offering. So in this case, Hasselhoff Incorporated, there's five million shares that exist in the company. Investor number one, investor number two, and the employees own those shares. So investor number one owns 40%, number two 40%, and the employees 20%. Two million shares, two million shares, and a million shares respectively. 
they're going to offer a million shares on the public market uh, in order to raise money. That's what this is up here. So they're going to offer those shares on the public market. The bankers convince the mutual fund, funds that the company Hasselhoff Incorporated is worth $100 million. So that means we're going to offer a million shares. The share price is going to be $20, and that makes our post money valuation $120 million. The company would be worth $120 million. So that means we're going to raise $20 million. Uh, we're selling a million shares to raise $20 million, so each share is going to be worth $20. Uh, that's, a, that's totally a conceivable situation, although most companies are going to be raising more than $20 million during their IPO. Uh, we do this for the simplicity of the math. So the share price is going to be $20 a share. The mutual funds agree that there's enough interest there. The bankers sell all those shares, and then you have your IPO. Uh, the, the first day of trading, the shares will start at $20. So this is the share price. And I'm going to show you sort of some typical things that happen uh, after IPOs. So you're going to hear me use these words, uh, and I'll explain what they mean. First of all, the, the S1. Um, part of the filing process is you file with the government. You tell them you're going to file. So before, this is, this is how many days, this is the date of the IPO, and this is afterwards, before you're going to file an S1. In between the S1 and when the company goes public, there's something called a quiet period. That means none of the executives can talk about what's happening inside the company. And then after, for 40 days, there's a quiet period, meaning no one in the company can publish information. The reason is this tends to be a very volatile time for the stock price, and they're trying to keep that volatility in check. There's also something called a lockout period. That means that the employees or the investors cannot sell any of their shares until 180 days out from the IPO. That's also to control, um, to control uh, the volatility of the stock. I'll show you that in a second. And then there's something called float that you should understand, which is how many shares are on the market and being traded. So in this case, we've got, a 1, million, we've got 1 million shares that are out trading on the market on the NASDAQ. And every day, you know, 500,000 of those shares change hands. That's called the float. So you've only got 500,000 shares changing hands, driving the price up and down. So let's say on the first day, the stock opens at 20, and immediately investors get really excited about the new TV shows that Hasselhoff Incorporated is producing. So the stock starts at trading actively at about 30. And it goes up and down over the course of the next couple of weeks. There's usually a lot of volatility in these periods. Uh, based on what investors think of the company. Remember, the company can't say anything because it's a quiet period and none of these guys can sell shares because there's a lockout period. So you can imagine that each day, if trading volume was 500,000 shares in here, what would happen overnight if every employee sold all million of their shares? That would be a really uh, direct f downward pricing force on the stock. So that's what they want to avoid. If there's only 500,000 shares, a day trading and all of a sudden you know the investor sold two million this price would just drop like crazy so this price may go up and down as you go to the 40-day lockup period so let's say at the end of the 40-day lockup period they issue uh, some information about how the company's doing they closed a new TV show they sold a new deal things are going really well so this stock starts to trend up the price of the stock and then it kind of levels off and comes toward the expiration of the lockup period this is another important date. At 180 days, all these guys can start selling stock. Um, usually, they don't flood the market with all of the shares at once, but uh, that's what the, the regulators are trying to avoid. That's why it's set up that way. So it's important to understand how this stuff all relates. You, you, you hire bankers and lawyers to get you ready. The bankers sell your stuff. The lawyers make sure you're legally compliant. Uh, the bankers go to institutional investors to sell your shares. You figure out how much the company is worth and how much each share is going to be worth. You file an S-1 with the government. Nobody says anything until you get up to IPO. You have the initial public offering, meaning you start selling those shares on the public market. And then you have liquidity uh, that you can share, sell shares anytime. Your investors and your employees can now sell their shares publicly. Uh, but they can't do it until the lockout period expires at 180 days. So that's sort of the basics about how IPOs work.